Hi, welcome back to some activity on the H4 plugins channel. Regular viewers will notice that I have been quiet for uh, a fair time. I'm breaking the silence to explain what I've been doing and why. But first, please subscribe to the channel, click on the like button, click the bell icon to get notified and support me on Patreon if you can. There's a link in the description below. One of the biggest problems in writing IoT apps for the ESP processors is long-term stability. I hope you will agree that H4 and H4 plugins go a long way to improving that, but there are still issues and after much soul searching, swearing and tearing out of hair, I have traced those problems back to these three libraries. And as a result of looking in detail at why they fail, uh, I have decided that the only practical solution is to totally rewrite them from the ground up. And that's what I've been doing for, uh, for far too long, uh, quite frankly. Anyway, I'm going to explain to you very briefly what the problems with those libraries are and why they need a ground up rewrite. So, what we have here is what I call the, the safety envelope. If you operate your app within this zone, which is below a particular speed and below a particular size of data that you transmit, then everything appears to work. But trust me, that is by accident, not by design. If you exceed a safe speed limit and or a safe size limit, you are then in the failure zone. And that is where the instability problems occur. And they occur in a variety of different ways, which we'll look at in more detail. Now, in the long term, I'm going to do some much more detailed, highly technical expert series videos on these issues. Um, so that you don't have to take my word for it. You can run my test programs on your devices and get the same results and see what the issues are. But the major problem here is on the size front, there is a hard limit of the number of LWIP buffers. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's probably why you're operating in the safe zone and you don't realize that there is so much of a problem. But it's implementation dependent uh, and you can't change it and it's very difficult to find it out and write code that uh, gets around it. Similarly with the speed, um, that, is, that is dependent on such a toxic mix of parameters it's almost impossible to predict what happens but essentially if you send small packets at a high rate of speed, the code will fail. And if you send large packets, even at a slow rate of speed, if they're larger than that buffer size, then, then the library will fail. So let's look in detail at each of the libraries. ESP Async TCP. Now, Let's not forget that this serves as the basis for many other libraries that sit on top of it and use it. So any of the libraries that call ES async TCP will, by inheritance, exhibit any or all of these problems. So the first problem is that if you send a, a data packet that is larger than the LWIP buffer size, it will just be silently discarded. It will get thrown away, you get no warning and no explanation and data just disappears, which for a, a, a library that sets itself up as a communications library is pretty fatal to start with. However, not many people send big packets. Um, secondly, for a library that builds itself as async, it doesn't correctly implement the async model, which leads to a lot of problems. So, for example, it will only work if it operates in what I call 
ping pong pairing, which means that if you do a transmit, receive, transmit, receive, transmit, ping pong, ping pong, then everything's fine. If, however, your app operates truly asynchronously and does a send, send, receive, send, receive, receive, for example, or anything that is not TXRX, TXRX, it will fail. There's, there's no ifs or buts about that. It will fail. And that is dependent upon the speed at which you send them and the size that you send and how rapidly the buffer fills up and that toxic mix again. But essentially, if you write consecutive writes less than five milliseconds apart, you're going to lose data or crash or run out of heap or just get a random exception out of the blue. And if any of those things sound familiar to you, that's why ESP Async Web Server then, obviously, as previously described, exhibits all of those features because it relies on ESP Async TCP, which is fundamentally flawed. Worse on Async Web Server, WebSockets implementation is totally broken. Now, I'm not particularly uh, up on the WebSockets. I use server sent events, just the one way version of WebSockets, just a push technology. And ironically, the reason I do that is because the WebSockets are totally broken. And when I first tried using them as the obvious solution, they failed and I turned to SSE. They're both limited to a fixed value of 8, for example, on an ESP8266, which makes them totally useless and impractical for any real world applications that wants to do dynamic updates to a web UI, for example, which is what those technologies are for. And what they do is silently discard any message over that limit of 8. No warning, no error, nothing. It just throws the data away. Um, now, when you look into the code, what is again quite ironic and ultimately quite depressing is that the reason that's done is to try and prevent those problems. So this is just a sticking plaster and a very poor one over basically what is a gaping wound. Um, and hence the reason for the ground up rewrite, because that limit exists to prevent those problems. Really what needed to have been done is to fix the problems. but. Uh, for reasons you'll see in the expert series of videos, that's just not possible with the way they're written because they're just not written very well. SSE is even worse because it doesn't accurately implement the standard. It doesn't actually do what SSE should do. Um, as a result, the API is illogical uh, and it's also incorrect in many places, leading to confusion from the programmer. But worse, even if it did do those things, because it relies on ESP Async uh, TCP, it's got a problem. But it's got another problem in that, yet again, uh, ESP Async Web Server doesn't operate asynchronously properly. So, for example, it allows simultaneous unprotected updates to the queue which means that basically your app is putting things in the queue and asynchronously that queue is being updated and that could happen right in the middle of the time when you're putting data in there and obviously the data then just gets mashed and mungled and, and bad things happen. Um, the bad things happen depending on how fast you send them, what size they are and the toxic mix. But the bottom line is that if you send rapid SSE updates, you will crash. Now, shortcomings in all libraries. Notice that I haven't mentioned async TCP very much. That's because that, that's probably one of the better examples. Uh, it, it doesn't cause as many problems, but it is a dependency of async web server on ESP32. And so solving the problem means that that has to get rewritten as well. But all of those libraries have minimal error reporting or warnings of, of any impending problems partly because it appears that the author didn't realize how those problems occur and how to prevent them. But there's no low heap protection. So if you do start getting towards the edge of that failure zone, the next thing you know about it is a crash. 
with with no warning or explanation or error, which makes writing stable apps very difficult and it makes debugging even more difficult. So what's the solution then? The solution then is the complete ground up rewrite uh, of a library which I'm going to be calling H4 async TCP. Now that replaces the existing aardvark TCP in the H4 menagerie and talks directly to LWIP and it's the same code base for ESP8266 and 32. So barring a few hardware abstractions, if it works on one, it's going to work on the other as well in the same way. That then serves as the basis for a new library H4 async web server, which replaces obviously ESP async web server. And also there will be major updates to um, async HTTP, the remote get um, which will replace Armadillo HTTP and there'll be a new version of Pangolin which will have its name changed and Pangolin will die sadly uh, and become async MQTT. The benefits of doing this are one obviously that things are going to be much more stable so there's a much larger safe envelope I would love to say actually that the safe envelope is <laughs> fully to the edge of that box but you know I'm human and there'll be bugs in my code too but none of the fundamentally flawed failures uh, in the current libraries. The other benefit that there will be is that when that occurs, for example, if you start sending too much data that no library, even a perfect one, can manage because there just isn't enough resources in the MCU, you will get a warning, a back off error. There will be callback functions to let you know that, that, that that's a problem. And if you carry on, then there will be an error with a, with a message so that you know what you've done wrong. It's fully asynchronous and correctly operates uh, the asynchronous model in all modes. And that's basically because that's what H4 does. And these new libraries of mine just leverage the functionality of H4 to protect against data corruption in an async environment. Ironically, the code is smaller. And the reason the code is smaller is because the Pangolin, for example, I would say about 30 or 40 percent of the code in Pangolin was put there to get round the problems in those other libraries. Now that they've gone, that code doesn't need to be there anymore. And that makes for a smaller code and faster code. So there's really nothing not to like once I get everything fully working. Now I'm, I'm at the early stages, but it's looking good so far. Please remember to subscribe, like, Click the notification button and support me on Patreon if you can. Thanks and uh, see you next time.